Welcome back to the charismatic voice. I recently fell in love with Lacuna Coil and I need more. So I asked you which song to do next and your most requested is Heaven's a Lie. By the way, while skimming those comments for your requests, I saw that there was also a comment from Christina Scabia herself. Christina, thank you so much for your response and your inspiring voice. Would you like to have tea with me sometime, maybe on this channel, like a tea time interview? Let me know. And in the meantime, let's all of us dig into some awesome music. Sorry, that was such a beautiful use of registration, just right where we stopped. I I love the way she uses her vocal registers to help express the song. It's so gorgeous. But I, I want to go back to the very beginning. I dig this instrument selection and um, the way it feels like it's swirling. I think there's something interesting happening with the time signature here. So I'm going to check that out. Okay, so this could be written in 4-4, but the subdivision is what makes it feel like it's kind of swirling and truncated every now and then in the time signature. Let me count this out. Three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two. So it's a combination of three, three, and two. Two. And together that makes eight. And then you can divide that essentially into four, which is what brings it to a possible four, four time signature. Sometimes you'll also see music that's written out more explicitly. Um, but uh, the way that has that sort of triple meter going underneath, it could even be written as eight, eight. It's kind of weird. You can, because it has that different feeling, there are different possible ways to put this on a sheet of music. Um, but most likely, I've seen something like this written as 4-4, four, four, but then combined underneath in brackets of 3, brackets of 3, and brackets of 2, essentially. Uh, that all said, what we're looking for is the feeling at this point. We're listening to it. A lot of people don't even use sheet music to write these things out when they're working together with the band anymore. They just make audio tracks and go back and forth. I really like using this kind of thing to sort of disturb the sense of time. And I love the way it feels like it's swirling. Also, it feels like we're going between different realities. Whoa. That is, is very matrix. This really makes me want to have long flowing headbangs. I love it, but long flowing headbangs with the same sway that they're using in three threes and twos. <laughs> okay, back to her beginning. Why? 
twice in this verse, I think. Maybe, uh, maybe more. She uses a diphthong to distinguish between different pitches. The K Y Y. A diphthong, for those of you who don't watch this channel a lot, because I talk about diphthongs quite a bit, a diphthong is when you take one vowel sound and, or one vowel, but it actually has two vowel sounds in it. So A is a diphthong. Uh, if I were to say may, hey, day, all of those sound like one sound, but there's actually two vowels that make them up. This is A and E. A, and so she uses the two different vowels to go between two different notes here. Right. It's really easy to hear once you know what you're looking for. That's the other spot. Again, super obvious in the way she's doing it, and it's really specific. That's something that all classical training will harp on is what are you gonna do with a diphthong? Or what if you have three sounds like a diphthong? That's another question. How, where do you put those vowels? Which one do you elongate? Uh, when you have clear choices, it tells me that you've studied where you want to place your sounds more and you're being more specific and intentional. That's so pretty. <sighs> it, so she was singing in her chest voice and then essentially flipped over into her head voice. Really lovely floaty elements there. Gorgeous. I just love the way her sound, the tone quality overall is so full throated. It's very open, yet at the same time it has good focus. There's even a tiny bit of nasality in her focus. Let's talk about that more later. Let's keep going for now. So pretty. Wow. Oh, I love the way that when Andrea comes in, it almost feels thrashy. There's so much torment in his tone combined with the beauty of hers. But they they're also have something inherent in the two tone qualities that when they combine, it really works. His is definitely more forward in that part as well. It feels like it's being ripped from him, but it's some sort of beautiful ripping, perhaps. Wow. And again, there's this feeling of just wanting to headbang and let the hair go. Wow. <laughs> Wow. Um, I should mention Heaven's a Lie is a bit of a deceiving title. The song is not anti-religious. Uh, Heaven's a Lie is a metaphor not meant to be interpreted lit literally. Uh, Christina said the word heaven is a metaphor for a perfect life. So just keep that in mind while you're listening to the lyrics. Um, definitely not a literal song. I want to ask uh, what all of you think the red represents. I think we had the red once earlier, but mostly it's been black and white as far as their wardrobe costume choices go, very black and white, which I thought was, despite the non-literal meaning of heaven, was basically yin and yang, heaven, hell kind of idea. And then we see this red and lips too. I feel like maybe this is 
passion within this whole thing? Let me know in the live premiere chat if you're you're hanging out with me there. Let me know what you think the red represents. I'm super curious. It definitely feels very symbolic to me. <laughs> the way she expresses the word no is to die for. Here it is again. I need to know. <laughs> wow. What is, I feel like that reminds me of an 80s or 90s uh, like diva soul, or maybe pop, anyhow. Um, I, there's a, I'm hearing some other singer in there. She obviously reminds me a lot of Amy Lee and Evanescence. I, I definitely hear that. Um, but when she goes to no here, I love the way, again, very full throated sound, but she has this little like tremble in the vibrato and then it fades away almost like it's being swallowed inside. Again, I need to know what it and it just cascades off at the end as well. Oh my gosh. I need to know what did I choose to betray you? Something wrong. So tone quality. In this lower area of the voice, to have the open sound and the airy sound, it's um it's not uncommon to have an open and airy sound in that chest voice area, but I like the way she's balancing it with this forward focus while not cutting off any of that openness. And she's doing that partly by going a little nasal in the sound, giving it just a little tiny bit of nasality. Sometimes that's considered bad in various styles, um, but it really depends on the style and genre that you're singing in. And in this case, I think it brings a lot of clarity and cut and it's a beautiful, beautiful tone to know what did I choose to betray you something Pretty. wrong with all the plans of my life I didn't realize that you sultry that's the word for her voice I think she has a very sultry tone and it's very gorgeous and well placed I didn't realize that you Pretty. Again. Ooh, so I. <sighs> so I think that she probably did the same thing where she flipped up and then layered a few more harmonies in there. I, the production of that moment is really mesmerizing. Okay, just a second. Love the long phrasing, the control of that. The uh, I it's just so expansive, and I also really love the way she's able to mix, essentially mix registers. I've talked about her singing in her chest voice. Talked about floating into that higher head voice. In this last part, she was singing in what a lot of us would call a mixed register, or just. Sitting in, singing in mixed voice. Uh, there's sort of like a sticky area here among vocal pedagogues. Uh, and that's because uh, it depends on the genre you were trained in, whether you talk about mixed. And uh, for me from classical music, I tend to just talk about chest voice and head voice because that's also really defined by what laryngeal engagement is happening. If it's chest voice, it's TA dominant, meaning thyroid is the primary muscle engaged to create a thicker sound. And if it's head voice, it's C T dominant, meaning that the cricothyroids are engaged. So that creates a little bit of a thinner sound. It stretches the chords more. That's your higher sound. If you're mixing the two, that is always happening, uh, almost always happening. It's not very common that you have completely thyroid retinoid or completely cricothyroid, uh, but 
Sometimes when you're more in the middle, we'll call that mixed when there's a heavier sound, but the person is actually in head voice, for example, we'll call that mixed. So here she has a really beautiful way of mixing those tones. So it sounds heavier and thicker without actually taking all of the weight from chest voice up, which would be a lot more straining. And I think not as mesmerizing for this place in the song. So passionate. I love the rasp in his voice. It's just very present and a great layer of texture. So visceral. Screen shake is really cool up there. And no screen shake there. Matrix again. Very video game. Hmm. The visual effects throughout this are really interesting. It does feel like there's some sort of reality blur that's happening a lot. I like the way they thinned out the, uh, essentially the whole sound so that you had a lot more uppers and then had this big drop here. Oh, and I felt so drawn into her voice at that moment too. Really smart production and just design of the whole song. Send me free with your love. And I like the way she's leaning into and opening up free. Send me free. There's a lean. This song makes me somehow feel like I'm soaring somewhere, that I'm flying. It just, it's like, it feels so open and expansive and floaty at times. I, I'm not, I think it might partly be the time signature and the long phrases that's achieving that, but whatever it is, it's like, it's gotten to that point of being magical, which is really special. Just gonna point out this little tiny enunciation thing. I was like, oh, did I point it out earlier? And I, I delayed and now I'm like, no, they need to know. So it's with your love, right? There's a TH in there, with your. But when we make it more colloquial or more casual, um, when we're just talking to each other, sometimes we with your love and it becomes a CH. It's this really interesting dialect. Uh, I don't personally use that, but I hear it when people are talking casually to each other quite frequently. And I always feel like, wait, there's no CH in there. That's a TH. But I think it's really good that they're deliberately doing this every single time. They've agreed on what type of pronunciation they're gonna use for this that fits their particular style and situation. And they're using it over and over, a lot of, uh, continuity in that choice. So you know that it was deliberate. 
Again, very Matrix or very um, video game, but I feel like this is my I know Kung Fu moment. I hope I get to interview her. It's uh, I hear she also likes video games or gaming of some sort, so it'll be really fun to nerd out about all kinds of things. That song totally casts a spell. It's weird. I still feel like I'm kind of swooping back and forth. And the reality distortion that I think they were trying to bring to us with the music video feels very present. I uh, almost feels kind of blurry. I love the way that all of these elements of music can make us feel things like this. Whoa. If you want to listen to some more analysis of Lacuna Coil the first time that I heard them and analyzed them on the channel, you can check out this video over here and may you fall more in love with music every day.